Yes, yes, guys, everything bite sized here with another funny Reddit post. It's titled, You just won a $656 million lottery. What do you do now? The top reply says, Congratulations, you just won millions of dollars in a lottery. That's great. Now you're fucked. No, really, you are. You're fucked. If you just want to skip the biographical tales of woe of some of the math tax protagonists, skip on down to the next comment to see what you do in the event you win the lottery. You see, it's something of an open secret that winners of obnoxiously large jackpots tend to end up badly with alarming regularity. Not the $1 million winners, but anyone in a nine-figure range is at risk. Eight figures, pretty likely to be screwed. Seven figures, yep, painful. Perhaps this is a consequence of the sample. The demographics of lottery players might be exactly the wrong people to win large sums of money. Or perhaps money is the root of all evil. Either way, you're going to have to be careful. Don't believe me? Consider this. Large jackpot winners face double-digit multiples of probability versus the general population to be the victim of 1. Homicide, something like 20 times more likely 2. Drug overdose 3. Bankruptcy, how's that for irony? 4. Kidnapping, I can see all this being true to be honest, if you've got that much money um, and triple-digit multiples of probability versus the general population rate to be 1. Convicted of drunk driving Two, the victim of homicide at the hands of a family member, 120 times more likely in this case. Ain't, <laughs> ain't love grand. <laughs> a defendant in a civil lawsuit. A defendant in fel felony criminal proceedings. <laughs> Believe it or not, your biggest enemy, if you suddenly become possessed of large sums of money, is you. At least you will have the consolation of meeting your fate by your own hand. But if you can't manage it on your own, don't worry. There are, there are any number of willing participants ready to help you start your vicious downward spiral for you. Mind you, many of these will be quote-unquote friends, quote-unquote friendly neighbours, or quote-unquote family. Often, they won't even have evil intentions, but, as I'm sure you know, that makes little difference in the end. Most aren't evil, most aren't malicious, some are, none are good for you. <laughs> it's like... Just as a side note, it's that it reminds me of that expression, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Anyway, as we, I'm going to take a vape, right, and, and a little drink of water because my mouth is getting dry and I'm kind of getting a bit worked up and anxious. I get a bit ahead of myself and try and read too quickly. Right, give me a second, lads and lasses. Right. Jack Whitaker. A Johnny Cash attired West Virginian native. Blah, blah, blah. See what I mean? Jack Whitaker, a Johnny Cash attired West Virginia native, is the poster boy for the dangers of a lump sum award. In 2002, Mr. Whit Whitaker, parentheses 55 years old at the time, won what was also at the time the largest single award jackpot in US history, 315 million. Fuck, that's a lot of money, man. At the time, he planned to live as if nothing had changed, <laughs> or so he said. He was remarkably modest and decent before the jackpot, and his ship sure came in, right? Wrong. <laughs> Mr. Whitaker became the subject of a number of personal challenges, escalating into personal tragedies, complicated by a number of legal troubles. Whitaker, see, look, I can imagine, like, someone winning a lottery, yeah, Spending all their money and not realising they owe a bunch of taxes and then ending up bankrupt. I can see that with the cocaine, the, the hookers. I can see it. I can see it. Anyway, Whitaker wasn't a typical lottery winner either. His net worth at the time of his winnings was in excess of 15 million owing to his ownership of a successful contracting firm in West Virginia. Oh, so he was rich already. His claim to want to live as if nothing had changed actually seemed plausible. He should have been well equipped for wealth. He was, he was already well, quite wealthy after all. By all accounts, he was somewhat modest, low profile, generous and good natured. He should have coasted off into the sunset. Yeah, not exactly. Whitaker took the all cash option, 170 million instead of the annuity option. All oh, right, so do you get, wait, so let me just break that. So, okay, so if he wants the all cash option, he gets 170 million instead of like annuity, annuity. Does that mean like you get like a certain amount of money every year or something? Anyway, Whitaker took the all cash option, 170 million, and took possession of 114 million in cash after 56 million in taxes. Ooh, that stings. After that, things went south. 
Whitaker quickly became the subject of a number of financial stalkers who would lurk him at his regular breakfast hideout and accost him with suggestions for how to spend his money. They were unemployed. <laughs> no, an interview tomorrow morning wasn't good enough. They needed cash now. Perhaps they were, had a surefire business plan. Their daughter had cancer. A niece needed dialysis. Needless to say, Whitaker stopped going to his breakfast haunt. Eventually, they began ringing his doorbell, sometimes in the early morning. Before long, he was paying off-duty deputies to protect his family. See, I, the minute I had that sort of money, I would have a compound built with bulletproof glass and armed guards and dogs. I would, honestly. Anyway, he was accused of being heartless, cold, stingy. Let, letters poured in, children with cancer, diabetes, MS, you name it. He hired three people to sort the mail. A detective to filter out the false claims and the con men and women was retained. Brenda, the clerk who had sold Whitaker the ticket, was a victim of collateral damage. Whitaker had written her a cheque for $44,000 and brought her house, but she was by no means a millionaire. Rumours that the state routinely paid the clerk who had sold the ticket 10% of the jackpot winnings hounded her. She was followed home from work, threatened, assault oh shit, assaulted. See, that's not good. It's not even true either. She didn't even have that money that they that they thought she had and she got assaulted man that's fucked up and and when you when you hear that assaulted when it's to do with a woman who knows what the fuck that means that could fucking mean some dark shit anyway let me just take some more water this post is long man i wasn't expecting this kind of getting out of breath anyway Whitaker's car was twice broken into by trusted acquaintances who watched him leave large amounts of cash in it. $500,000 and $200,000 were stolen in two separate instances. The thieves spiked Whitaker's drink with prescription drugs in the first instance. The second incident was the handiwork of his granddaughter's friends who had been probing the girl for detail details on Whitaker Whitaker's cash for weeks. Even Whitaker's good faith generosity was questioned when he offered £10,000 to improve the city's water park so that it was more handicapped accessible. Locals complained that he spent more money at the strip club. <laughs> Parentheses, amusingly, this was true. See, like, give me a sec here. Let me breathe. Let me have a vape. Let me drink some water. I'm not even going to edit it out. <sighs> I want it to all be one take. And then it, like, kind of makes me anxious. Um, so yeah, I apologise for all the uh, the fuck ups, the vocal fuck ups, all the uh, so faux pas. Okay, wait, let me have a vape. I'm sorry, lads. I can't be bothered to edit all this out because I'm unlike my other videos. I'm doing all of this on my phone. <laughs> anyway. Whitaker invested quite a bit in his own businesses, tripled the number of people his businesses employed, parentheses, making him one of the larger employers in the area, and eventually had given away 14 million to charity through a foundation he set up for the purpose. This is, of course, what you are quote unquote supposed to do set up a foundation, be careful about your charity giving. It made no difference in the end. To top it all off, Whitaker had been had been accused of ruining a number of marriages. His money made other men look inferior, they said. <laughs> Wherever he went in the small West Virginia town he called home. Resentment grew quickly and festered. Whitaker paid four settlements related to this sort of claim. Yes, you read that right. Four. Wait, let me read that again. So he ruined marriages by making men look inferior. So I'm guessing women were chasing him and then... He got sued because he, the, the wives of these men found him more attractive and probably tried to seduce him. All right, this is America. Anyway, his family and their immediate circle were quickly the victims of odds defying numbers of overdoses. Oh, shit. I've overdosed fucking four times on opiates, emergency room visits, and even fatalities. Whoa. His granddaughter, the 18 year old Brandy, who Whitaker had been given a two. 2100 per week allowance fuck you know was uh, let's find out how much money that is 2100 2100 times 52 i think it's 52 weeks in a year that's 109200 dollars in a year as an allowance fuck you know man his family in immediate circle okay all right let me start that again 
His family and their immediate circle were quickly the victims of odds defying numbers of overdoses, emergency room visits and even fatalities. His granddaughter, the 18-year-old Brandy, who Whitaker had been given a 2100 per week allowance, was found dead after having been missing for several weeks. Her death was apparently from a drug overdose, but Whitaker suspected foul play. Her body had been wrapped in a tarp and hidden behind a rusted out van. Fucking hell, that got dark quickly. Ooh. Her 17-year-old boyfriend had expired three months earlier in Whitaker's vacation house, also from an overdose. Do you know what? It's surpri- it might be cocaine overdoses. It's surprising how like you don't need a lot of pure co- cocaine to get like a heart attack. I know someone who had a heart attack from smoking crack cocaine. Anyway, like that's a, that's the story for another day. Some of his friends had robbed the house after his overdose, stepping over his body to make their escape and then returning for more before stepping over his body again to leave. Oh, this is getting so dark, man. I wasn't expecting this. His parents sued for the wrongful death, claiming that Whitaker's loose purse strings contributed to their son's death. Fuck, you know, you can get sued for anything in the US. It's fucking ridiculous. Amazingly, juries are prone to award damages in cases such as these. Whitaker settled, again. Even before the deaths, the local and state police had taken a special interest in Whitaker after his newfound fame. He was arrested for minor and less minor offences. Shit, my phone's going off. Might be. Um, even before the deaths, the local and state police had taken a special interest in Whitaker after his newfound fame. He was arrested for minor and less minor offences many times after his winnings. Despite having had a nearly spotless record before the award, Whitaker's high profile couldn't have helped him more in this reg- much more in this. this blah, 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 blah. One sec. One sec. Let me get my head back together. Even before the deaths, the local and state police had taken a special interest in Whitaker after his newfound fame. He was arrested for minor and less minor offences many times after his winnings. Despite having had a nearly spotless record before the award, Whitaker's high profile couldn't have helped him much in this regard. In 18 months, Whitaker had been cited for over 250 violations, ranging from broken taillights on every one of his five new cars, to, oh, that's people who are jealous, like keying his cars and shit, to improper display of renewal stickers. A lawsuit charging various police organisations with harassment went nowhere, and Whitaker was hit with the court costs instead. I don't understand the whole legal system in America. Like, you. You like whether you're like you get sued and then people end up settling just because they don't want to spend all the money on defending themselves. It's like it can happen to anyone. No one is safe. Anyone can catch that smoke, man. Anyway, Whitaker's wife filed for divorce and in the process froze a number of his assets and the accounts of his operating companies. See what I mean? Caesars in, At- in, An- <laughs> Caesars in Atlantic City sued him for $1.5 million to cover bounce checks caused by the asset freeze. Fucking hell. It's wild, wild west, mate. Today, Whitaker is badly in debt and bankruptcy looms large in his future. But hey, that's just one example, right? Wrong. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is in italics. Nearly one third of multi-million dollar jackpot winners eventually declare bankruptcy. Whoa, some end up worse. To give you just a taste of the possibilities, consider the fates of... Fuck me, this post is long. All right, let me take a deep breath. Fucking hell, it's nearly over though. Right. Today, Whitaker is badly in debt and bankruptcy looms large in his future. But hey, that's just one example, right? Wrong. <laughs> Nearly one third of multi million dollar jackpot winners eventually declare bankruptcy. Some end up worse. To give you just a taste of the possibilities, consider the fates of Billy Bob, ha- Billy Bob Harrell Jr., 31 million, Texas, 1997. As of 1999, committed suicide in the wake of incessant requests for money from friends and family. Winning the, <laughs> quote, winning the lottery is the worst thing that ever happened to me. Whoa. William something or other. 16.2 million, Pennsylvania, 1988. In 1989, brother hires a contract murderer to kill him and his sixth wife. Landlady sued for a portion of the jackpot, convicted of assault for firing a gun at a debt collector, declared bankruptcy, dead in 2006. Evelyn Adams, 5.4 million. What? 
parentheses, won twice, 1985, 1986. I've heard of that, people winning a lottery twice. That's crazy. As of 2001, poor and living in a trailer gave away and gambled most of her fortune. That sounds like what happened to me. Suzanne Mullins, 4.2 million, Virginia, 1993. As of 2004, no assets left. Shefik Talmaj, what is with these American names, man? 6.7 million, Arizona, 1988, as of 2005, declared bankruptcy. Thomas Strong, 3 million, Texas, 1993, as of 2006, died in a shootout with police. Whoa. Victoria Zell, 11 million, 2001, Minnesota, as of 2006, broke, serving seven-year sentence for vehicular manslaughter. Fuck. Karen Cohen, $1 million, Illinois, 1984, as of 2000, filed for bankruptcy, as of 2006, sentenced to 22 months for lying to federal bankruptcy court. Jeff I thought it said Jeffrey, Je Jeffrey Dahmer then. Jeffrey Dampier, $20 million, Illinois, 1996, as of 2006, kidnapped and murdered by his own sister-in-law. Ed Gideon, $8.8 .8 million, Texas, 1993, as of 2003, dead. Wife saddled with his debts. As of 2005, wife sued by her own daughter who claimed that she was taking money from a trust fund and squandering cash in Las Vegas. William Hurt, 3.1 million, Michigan, 1989. As of 1991, addicted to cocaine, divorced, divorced, broke, indicted for murder. V Michael Kling, oh man, you've got some weird names. Two million, as of 1998, sued by her own mother, claiming he failed to share the jackpot with her. Janet Lee, 18 million, 1993, Missouri, as of 2001, filed for bankruptcy with $700 in assets. Oh, it, it continues in the post below. Oh, I'm going to have to take a break. Give me one second. Well, this goes deep. This, this is a rabbit hole, this is, ladies and gents. How much more is left of this post? Fucking you know, hell, it goes on and on. Do you know what? I'll give it a good go. I'll give it a good go, guys. I'll try. This is going to be difficult. I might have to do a multi-part video. Do you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to do a multi-part video, I think, because this goes on forever. I'll try. <sighs> oh, man, this is a struggle. I'm really struggling with this, ladies and gents. All right. So what the hell do you do if you are unlucky enough to win the lottery? This is the absolutely most important thing you can do right away. Nothing. Yes, nothing. Do not declare yourself the winner yet. Do not tell anyone. The urge is going to be nearly irresistible. Resist it. Trust me. One, immediately retain an attorney. Get a part. This is going to have to be a part two. Like, honestly, like, I mean, I am blown away by what, like, the, the, uh, the consequences that have happened to a lot, all these people who won the lottery. This is going to have to be a part two later, and then um, it will discuss, like, good advice on if you do win the lottery. Anyway, I've been everything bite-sized. I apologise for the shit delivery. Um, I get really nervous when I record these live videos, and, um... Check out my channel, check out my shorts, check out my music videos. Yes, mate. Peace.